Hey guys, I had a question about motors and testing motors. Actually, it was more about megging using a megger on a motor. First of all, we need to understand what is inside of a motor. We know that you have a motor and inside this motor, what do you find inside of an electric motor? Well, inside we have the casing here like this. Now, we have the casing all around on the outside. Then we have the shaft that sticks out like this. Inside here, we're gonna have what they call the rotor. The rotor, of course, that is the part that is going to rotate. That's the part that's gonna go around and around and we make that rotation do things. Okay, then we're gonna have the wires that come in like this. Let's say this is L1 and that's your other wire, either L2 or the neutral. And as they come in, then it's going to have the windings here and then it's gonna go back on out. The windings, well, I drew them out like this, but what really happens is, or one of the ways that this is, this is happening is that we have the, the casing, we have the mount right there, we have the um, wires that come in, and then this wire, for example, that's where the, all the windings are gonna be. And then of course, like I said, it's gonna go back out. Inside here, that's where we have the rotor. And then you have the shaft right there and that's what's gonna rotate. Okay, so these windings, they're gonna have insulation all around them. They have the insulation and the electrons, the electricity is going to come in here and go right on out. Come in here and go right on out. Basically, that's what's happening in the motor. As it goes through, then it's going to generate a magnetic field and it makes this rotor rotate. So now we have rotation and we can make it, like I said, do work. Okay. In a previous video, I talked about what a short is. And also I talked on a different video, I talked about what a ground is. We said a ground is when there's an electrical connection between the windings and let's say the casing right there. So now we have a connection. That means that electrons, the electricity as they come in, since electricity is lazy and it wants to take the easy way out, it's gonna come in, go into the casing, go around and around looking for a way to get to ground. Let's say that you come along and as you come along, you touch this. Well, when you touch it, like it or not, you're gonna be wearing these type of shoes which means that, yeah, you are ground. When that happens, guess what? You get shocked. You get electrocuted. So this right here is telling me that electricity or the electrons are trying to get to ground and they're going through you. One of the things that I guess we all have is a heart. Once electricity goes through your heart like this, well, the heart doesn't know what to do, and it stops. Once it stops, what happens? There's no more blood flow. When there's no more blood flow, no more blood to your brain, yeah, and then you die. Now, I know we see it in movies, we see it in videos where people are frying and there's smoke and stuff coming out. It doesn't have to be like that. All that has to happen is the electrical signal going to your heart has to be disrupted. Once that's disrupted, your heart doesn't know what to do and it stops. So, what is the most important wire you could possibly have? This is usually a test question in my classes. The most important wire you could possibly have is your ground wire. Because this ground wire is not gonna have any resistance. Because it has no resistance, then it's going to rather go through the ground wire than through you. So now, this is the most important wire. Usually this is green. You've got a green wire right here that goes to ground, it goes to some metal mounting or whatever. That is the most important wire you could have. It could also go into, like I said, the cold water pipes. So one of the tests that we do with these motors is that we check the resistance. We check the resistance. So let's say that here, for example, we have this and we have this here. What is this? That's your symbol for a fuse. Then you could have one of these right here. And what is that? That's the symbol 
for a circuit breaker. So once you have a short or you're drawing too many amps, these things are going to trip. You're going to blow the fuse or you're going to trip the circuit breaker, one of the two. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about ohms. Let's talk a little bit about resistance. So before we do that, we need to talk about numbers. We say that, let's say a number one is a lot smaller than a number five. And a five is a lot less than, let's say, a 10. Okay, so when you have a 10, you have a lot more than when you have a one. So if you have 10 ohms, you have a lot more resistance than when you have one ohm. When you have five ohms, yeah, you have more than one, but you have less than 10. Which means that if you are here, you're gonna have more resistance, so it's gonna stop the flow of electrons. It's gonna slow down the flow so much that now you don't have that much flow. So I'm just making this up, but let's say here at one, we're gonna have a total of, uh, I don't know, let's say 10 amps. So now here at five, let's say we're gonna have, and I'm making these numbers up, I don't know, so let's say here we're gonna have seven amps right there. Here we have more resistance because we have more resistance, guess what? Now we may have, let's say, six amps right there. Now, the volt, the uh, ohms will affect the amperage. The other thing that will affect it is going to be the voltage. It's going to be the voltage. For example, the other day I was looking at a compressor. It was a carrier compressor. I don't remember the tonnage, but the thing is that we could run this compressor at 200 and eight volts. At 208 volts, they said that the resistance on the windings was gonna be 0.31. If we ran this at 460 volts, then the resistance uh, we said it was going to be, or carrier said that it was gonna be 1.3. That's the resistance. This was the ohms right here. So with 208, less voltage, less pressure, we're going to need less resistance. With higher voltage, we're going to need more resistance. If we could go up to, let's say, 600 volts, then we would need even higher resistance. So the manufacturers have figured all this out. And when it comes to motors, no, you can't use Ohm's law to figure out the uh, resistance because it is an inductive load, it is not a resistive load. Ohm's law will not work. So let's get back to what I was saying. On here, the resistance is going to vary also on how much the voltage is going to be. The more resistance you have, the less the amperage, the less electron flow. Now, how much flow are you supposed to have from the windings to the casing? How much flow? You're not supposed to have any flow, none. When we take a meter and we ohm the windings out, we wind the, we ohm them out, then we're gonna check the resistance here. Or we're checking the resistance. When we go from the wire to the casing, what should we get? What reading should we get from the wire to the casing when we're using an ohm meter? We should get what they call OL, open lead or open line, which means that there is no flow. Another one that you may hear is that is gonna be this. Infinity, infinity, that's a lazy eight right here. And that tells you that you have an infinite amount of resistance. If you have an infinite amount, then how much do you have? Way, way, way too much. You have a lot, you have more than you can handle. So in other words, nothing can get through because the resistance is going to be very, very high. It's gonna be super high. And because of that, then we don't have any electrons flowing through there. But when we have a little tiny connection, what's gonna happen? Some of the electrons are gonna leak through. They're gonna leak through, when they leak through, then that's when you trip your circuit breakers. Now we have a problem, because what's gonna happen is you're going to come here and you're gonna test this with your meter, and what's gonna happen? Well, you're gonna check from the wire to the casing like this and your meter's not gonna read anything. 
you reset the circuit breaker, it's going to trip. Hmm. Now I've talked to lots of mechanics and some of the mechanics say, they will say, you know, I reset it three times and then I'll start troubleshooting. Some mechanics that say, well, I'll do it two times. I usually reset it one time because I know that if it trips that instantly, then I know that there's a problem. So if I reset this and it trips, then I come in here and I start running my tests. Like I said, you can check the resistance on the windings and then you want to go to see if you have any connection or any resistance between your wires and your casing. Now, one thing about meters. These meters in the back right here, what do you have? You take it apart and inside you're going to have a 9 volt battery. A 9 volt battery. So that meter is going to have a 9 volt battery. What does that mean? That means that when we hook up the connect the leads, we're pushing the electrons through here with 9 volts. Because voltage is pressure. Pressure or the voltage is what's pushing the electrons and that is a measurement of pressure right there. So we're pushing with nine units, let's say, of pressure. Okay, but this motor is running off of 208 volts. The connection is so small right here that 208 can push it through, but nine cannot. Why? Because it's just not enough pressure. It's not enough pressure, so what are we going to do? Well, that's when we need a mega. We've got to have a mega for this. Why? Well, because a mega, a mega, you can set it to different testing pressures, different voltages, I guess you could say. For example, we could maybe set it to 250 volts. We may be able to set it to 500 volts. We may be able to set it to 1000 volts. So we can use different units of pressure to test this. Now let's say you buy a garden hose. You buy a garden hose and it's a very, very cheap one and it's only rated at 30 pounds of pressure. What happens if you hook it up to the spigot at home and you have 60 pounds of pressure? That hose is going to burst. You're going to blow a hole in it. It won't work right. It, it will fail. Okay, same thing with this. If this motor is designed to run off of 110 volts and you pump in 500 volts, what's going to happen? You're going to blow the insulation. You're going to destroy it because this motor is going to have insulation like this and inside the insulation, in the windings, you're going to have the copper wire. You're sending it through the copper wire and right here, you're going to blow a hole in it because you put too much pressure on this. So now you need to use a much, much lower voltage on this. People say that a mega is used to test the insulation of a motor, and that's correct. You're testing to see if this insulation is in good shape. Now, if you put too much voltage in it, like I said, even if the insulation is good, you're going to blow a hole in it because it's not designed for that voltage. Now, let's say that you have a motor that is 460 volts, runs off of 460, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to set this to 500 volts because now 500 is going to push the electrons through there and you're going to be able to read how many electrons are going through. The way you read it is by checking the ohms, by checking how many ohms you have on there. Now, the device is called a mega, a mega, mega, mega ohm meter. So if we have, let's say, a number one, just a plain old number one, and then we have a 10, and then we have a 1,000, and then we have a million, well, this is a mega. This is a meg right there. This is a kilo because this is a thousand right here. So now we need to know what we're talking about here. We said here that on, on this motor, let's say this motor, the manufacturer says it's supposed to uh, draw five amps. I don't know. And at five amps, 
we're supposed to have, and I'm making these numbers up, let's say two ohms. Two ohms. Okay, so we have two ohms. What happens if we increase the resistance? If we have more resistance, then there's going to be less flow. If we have less flow, then the amperage is going to drop. Here, what's happening is we have much and much more and much more resistance. Remember, we're not reading the resistance across or through the windings. We're reading the resistance between a wire or one of the terminals and the casing because this should be completely open. There should not be a connection. You should have either open lead, open line, or infinity right here. So this is what we need to keep in mind. Now, if we go ahead and test this, we may get, let's say, uh, 500 ohms. Well, if we get 500 ohms, that is a lot less than this right here because this is mega ohms right there. Now, you're, that's going to trip the breaker because we have a connection. Now, a lot of people say, a lot of manufacturers say, well, you should be reading between 2 and 1,000 mega ohms. And your mega is the device that's going to be able to tell you what that, re what that reading is. So if you are running a motor off of 600 volts and you set it for 250, it's not going to work. There's not enough pressure, not enough voltage to push it through. So keep that in mind. You need to know the settings. You need to know the voltage of the motor. And you want to make sure that you have the right amount of readings. If you get OL or infinity, that's even better. But if you start getting numbers, look for these numbers. Now keep that in mind. This is all about megas. There's a lot more to it than that. But this is just a brief, short video. This, uh, my name is Julio, Aircon Academy. Follow me on Facebook. Subscribe to my page here on uh, YouTube. And if you have any questions, any suggestions, please send them to me. And hopefully I can get them online for you. All right. Thank you.